Alrighty guys. I should have actually filmed the walk, but I didn't film the walk. I'll do a quick film now. We came up to the mountain today. Let's see. Hi. Hi. Um, where are we? Ah, uh, we're on top of the mountain. And we came for breakfast. Oh, and we just good. came for a walk. It was good. It yeah. was really good. It was good. And now we're going back home yeah. to see our child. Yeah. Alrighty. Whew. It is humid. Not hot, not too hot. It's only about 28, but it's humid. So I figured, because it was cool enough, I'll come out and do the garden. Whew. And I'm bloody pooped. So I'll show you what I've done so far. So you can see I laid out the stuff in the middle and the stuff on either side I didn't lay out. Those things are going to be plants that tend to be low to the ground. Oh, look at Moosey. Having a bit of a trot in the paddock. Hi, baby. Come here. Come on. So the yuccas go straight up. Um, tiger grass, cordylines, they all go straight up. And I've got green cordylines and red cordylines. So in the back, I've put a garvey because they kind of tend to stay low and they'll cluster and get nice and fat when there's more. And then I've put broms, bromeliads at the front because they'll kind of do the same. So I'm trying to put the lower things that don't get so high, grow so high, I'm putting them on either side. And then in the middle, because the tiger grass gets bushy and the yucca goes up, but kind of goes up, but it kind of stays like this spiky looking. Um, so I'm trying to have them in the middle. Hey, baby, did you get scared? What happened, baby? You all right? Hi. So I wanted to show you I don't know if you remember in the last few videos, I talked about self-propagating plants and, you know, how to get your garden done on the cheap. So I went with agaves, uh, bromeliads, uh, the cordyline are really good to replicate, and things like, um, what are they called? Succulents. They propagate really easily. <sighs> so I want to show you the bromeliad. I got this bromeliad from my friend, um, and it has been here now six-ish months and it started sprouting another so i wanted to show you how you can very very slowly um or if you have a generous friend that can donate some plants to you how you can very cheaply very easily and very freely um make a beautiful garden with lots of color without having to invest too much even if you did have to invest a little bit of money like let's say you didn't have any friends that had brahms or um quality lines or anything like that you could still buy them pretty cheap off something like facebook marketplace or you know a nursery that was shutting down that kind of thing and sell them oftentimes these kinds of self-propagating plants you'll actually see home nurses nurses is that even a word home nurses not nurses in health nurses in nursery like horticulturists then i don't know grower let's go with grower um oftentimes you'll see people doing this as a little bit of a side business where they they started off with one or two, they start propagating more and more and they'll sell them for like five bucks a pop or even cheap, a couple of bucks a pop, you know, for a pot or whatever. So I wanted to show you what it looks like when a brom or other self-propagating plant starts growing a second and how you can split them. Here's my brom. So this is the one that I got off, off my friend and it flowers. So there might be a spidey spider in there, but we'll see. Now you'll see here on this side, this, this is the second arm, this. You'll be able to see it better when I pull it apart, but that's a second arm. And that's basically over here. This is the brom that I got from my friend. This is the one that started growing on the side. So I was able to separate them and grow them. And again, what will happen, same as the Moses in the cradle. Once it grows up a little bit and it's settled, it's developed a root system, etc., it grows. This is a bromeliad that I grew from another one of these, I think. All these lighter kind of pinky shallow ones have all come from this one. So you see, it's got a really nice wet soil. Here's the roots. And see there, oh there's a spider. See there how it's growing? We can split that and make two plants. 
Oh man, might not be hot, but it's overcast and humid. But I think I've said that already. <laughs> hey Mix, what you doing? What you doing? Say hi. Mickey, 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 Mickey. Uh, so I'm halfway done. Um, I've kind of been putting the middle row up first because um, they might need deeper holes and a little bit more soil, especially the uh, tiger grass because I put them in big pots and they've, even though it looks like it's kind of drying off or dying off some parts of it, but this root system is really established. And I've just had a lot of luck, touch wood, with um, plants where they've got a really good root system, even if they're a little bit sad up top, um, I've been able to get them going again. So that's what I've done. So that's what I've done so far. Kind of hard to see because I've got some stuff with pots already here. Mish, mish. <coughs> um, oh my God, it's so hot. But yeah, it's getting along really well. So these as well, these have all come, they have all come from four plants that I brought back from Woodgate. Cause they, these were planted at Woodgate. And no doubt the person that planted them, our former tenant, maybe picked them up from someone else in the same way. So you'll see all along there, that's all been propagated from four plants. This is why it's good to find out, I don't know what they're called, I don't know if there's, like, I'm not a gardener, like I'm not a gardener like, you know, I'm not a professional gardener or anything. I don't have any qualifications in it, but um, I'm sure there's a name for these types of plants. If you can find what types of plants work in your area, like obviously if you live in a cold area, don't plant these because a lot of these are like, um, drought proof and you know all that kind of thing or subtropical ones so they might not survive in your climate so best thing to do oh, I can't get comfortable um, best thing to do is to find out like which kind of self propagating plants you have in your area that's suitable for your climate and then plant them that way and then at least you have this beautiful beautiful um, garden that you can make up pretty freely because it'll just keep regenerating new plant new plant new plant so I'm probably going to do the same when I get to Tambo. I've kept some, like the Moses in the cradle, I don't have, like my friend next door, he doesn't have that at his place. But I've kept a few Moses in the cradle so I can get them going at Tambo. Um, but all these other things, agaves, cordelines and, and bromeliads, he's, he's got them over there. So I'm going to just um, get them off him again. And I'm going to do lily pillies and moraes as well over there, around, particularly around the front, front fence, I think it'll be nice there. So yeah, I'm just taking a quick break. Hi, baby. Hi, 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 hi. It's my girl, my little girl. Um. <laughs> oh my God. That's a field mouse, is it? Or is yeah, it a rat? Field mouse. He's big. Sorry, buddy. You can't stay here. You gotta go. All right, have fun with that. Yeah, I will. <laughs> The garden is finished. Um, basically everything that I planted has come for free other than the tiger grass. The tiger grass cost me I think four bucks each as a tube stock. Everything else came from self-propagation from my friend's garden. Um, and then as I brought them here, because I would only bring one, um, I've managed to get sort of five to six plants from it. So I'll show you now. The total cost, I think the soil was a couple of hundred bucks because we bought in four cubes of soil. Um, and the cost of the tiger grass, which originally wasn't going to go there, it was going to go at the front. But then when we decided we were moving back, I put them here. So it was maybe 200 bucks uh, all up for this garden. And the rest was free. So I'll show you now. It's amazing. I love it. There we go. Everything, as I said, other than the tiger grass, uh, came from a friend of mine. So they were free. I bought them here, they started self-propagating. So this purple one, for example, I bought one like that. I got six plants out of it. Um, the bromeliads, these, um, this bromeliad gave two, but one bromeliad over there, the darker red one, sort of in the distance, 
that gave three, and the one that's a little bit yellow gave three. The green bromeliad at the back gave one additional one. All of these agaves are from my garden or his garden, propagated from existing plants. This one, I don't know what it is. It looks like a type of succulent. I bought one home that was smaller than this size. I managed to get seven plants out of it. Um, so yeah, and this is something that I found in the garden. Don't know what it was, but it established a good root structure, so I put it in. This is, I think, wild, uh, wild ginger it's called. That was one stem that I brought back that he uh, just wanted to chuck away and I put it in the soil. It did take a bit to develop a root structure, but once it did now it's got three sprouties. So technically I could have split these and planted more, but for my garden at Tambourine, I'll get, I'll get another one for me. With the Moses in the cradle. So I'll quickly show you the Moses in the cradle. As I said, I only brought back four plants from Woodgate. And these have all, some of them I've split and moved them along, but more often than not, they've just self-propagated. So this whole thing came from four plants. And I still have smaller plants that I'm taking with me to Tambourine. And as you can see, that's a pup, that's a pup. This is a pup, this is a pup. So this is actually a cluster of three. If you wanted to split them, you could split them. And there's probably more down there. Yeah. thing I'm going to do is get this agave and that agave over there and plant them where the marais are, where the cars are. Um, and then the only thing we have to do now for the garden is put the logs. And that's it. Garden's done. Alrighty, gang. That'll be it for now. The rain is coming. It's kind of been in smatterings all day. Um, I hope you got something out of that. I hope you learned something, um, especially how to use self-propagating plants in the garden to make a beautiful garden. This one is going to be well-established, drought tolerant, and won't need a lot of watering. So, um, and brings a lot of color as well. And I did it on the cheap. So um, that's another benefit as well. So just a short one. Uh, I didn't get to show you everything up at the mountain. It was actually my birthday yesterday, my 40th. Can you tell? <laughs> um, my 40th birthday yesterday. So we took it easy and had a quiet one, but we did go up to the mountain and have breakfast, which I forgot to film uh, much of that. So you only saw the tail end of that at the very beginning of the video. Anyway, guys, uh, I will check in with you again next week where we will hopefully be starting to make the final move to the tambourine property. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.